right, good morning, everyone. Good morning, church, and welcome to worship on this beautiful sunny day outside that God has given to us, and uh, we're thankful that we can come and worship in this way. Um, we thank you for technology today, uh, for the extra camera that we have, and we thank those who donate it financially in order for us to get this equipment. And we now have three cameras set up. One is Tom's phone, and we thank you for Tom and his phone and for the work that he does behind the scenes. But we have two um, stationary cameras now, and we are so grateful that you've contributed to that. And if you still want to contribute, um, we're looking for maybe one more camera. Um, so we could have three for some different angles to give you the best experience possible. Uh, so if you do want to contribute to that, uh, feel free to do so as the Lord lays it on your heart. Um, we start today a new sermon series called Explained, and we're going to be looking at that over the next uh, three or four weeks, and uh, we're going to dive right into God's Word today. Um, but before we do, the worship team is going to come and lead us in a time of worship, and we thank you for them as well, um, for John and his leadership to the team and our members who um, give so faithfully Sunday after Sunday. So we just want to thank them, and I hope they enjoyed last Sunday uh, to spend it with their significant others and maybe mothers as well, and uh, to celebrate them. So we thank you guys for all the work that you do um, to help lead us in worship. Our call to worship this morning, church, is found in Psalm 100, and it reads this, Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever. And his faithfulness to all generations. Church, will you pray with me as we begin worship this morning? Father, we thank you um, for this day that you've blessed us with, um, for this opportunity to engage in worship together in this way. And Lord, we just ask that your presence will be felt in our hearts, in our homes, in this place today. So Father, uh, use us today as your vessels, as we uh, look into your word, as we worship together as a congregation in this way. Father, be with us, bless us. We thank you for this day. We just pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, good morning, everybody. It's so good to be here with you today. And uh, yeah, I like you. I'm just loving, well, hope probably you, just loving the sunshine and uh, just basking in it, getting out in the garden and doing yard work and going for a bike ride. So I hope you're enjoying the sunshine too. And uh, grateful to be here. And uh, looking forward to worshiping with you wherever you are. So let's uh, sing together. Three, three. Sing, I love the Lord. Oh, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Oh, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your with all your strength, we go. With all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your
more. Oh, I will love you, Lord, with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength. Amen. I hope uh, wherever you are, you're singing out, maybe standing, maybe dancing, I don't know. But let's continue to sing together.
there is no one like you there is none beside you open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me i will put my life upon you
God, I pray that you would build that in us as we look out from ourselves and look to others and how we can be there for our neighbors, how we can carry your message of love to those around us, Lord. Thank you for today and for the opportunity to hear your word, for the opportunity to be challenged and be and be uh, encouraged, God, in, in how we can speak for you and go out into the world. Thank you, God, for today. Thank you for Stefan and the words that he's going to share. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you, worship team. Thank you, John, for playing those last two songs with a broken string. <laughs> um, yeah, we. Uh, I was joking with Tom right after we uh, we started worship and before the service. We always get together and pray, of course. And uh, Tom prayed for technology and that everything would work okay. And when he did, his phone camera fell over. <laughs> and uh, this morning, John's guitar string broke for, through the first song and. Uh, I guess the enemy is, is trying to get a, a foothold on us, but we're not going to let him this morning. Um, just like that last song said, um, the, the power of the Holy Spirit, um, it gives us power. And we, uh, we're definitely praying that uh, this morning over this service. So we're going to put all that aside, and we're going to focus on His Word this morning. And if you have your Bibles with you and you would like to follow along with us, we're going to be looking at a couple of verses found in Mark chapter 12, uh, verses 30 and 31. And thanks, Tom and Dalton, for putting that up for us this morning. Um, you'll see, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no greater, no greater commandment. Than these. So this morning we begin a new sermon series, and you'll see it at the bottom of your screen. It's explained. And the first point we're going to be looking at over these next number of weeks is the point of the Bible is to know God better. And we're going to unpack that a little bit this morning. And I used to think that as I got older, maybe a little bit more wiser in years, um, the more I thought I would know. But because after all, experience equals knowledge, right? But the reality, at least for me, is that the older I got, the more I realized how many things I actually didn't know, how many things that I didn't understand. And there are so many things that need explanation in our lives. The title of this series that we're looking at, like I said, is Explain, and I thought that I would share maybe some questions for you. For example, here's the first one. What's more difficult in life, brain surgery or rocket science? Or maybe how does the internet work? Or what about, and I, and I love this one, and, and my daughter just came to me and said she was a little bit hungry, and she said she'd love to have popcorn. So it's funny how all this ties in, is why does popcorn at the movie theater always taste better than movie popcorn when you're at home? Why? Why is that? But then in a more serious matter, there are questions that really matter to us. And even though many of us may be Christian, some of us since childhood, there's one thing that always seems to beg for an explanation. 
And that's the Bible. And we're going to be looking at that this morning. And if we're honest with ourselves and with what's in the Bible, there's a lot in His Word that can be challenging to understand. And we may read some parts in Scripture and wonder, what exactly does God really mean here? And I'm sure we've all had those instances where we've read through Scripture, whether it's in the morning or it's in the evening, whether it's in the group setting that we've read through a portion of Scripture, and we've all looked at each other with this glazed look over us, and we were trying to think, okay, well, what is that about? What is God's Word trying to tell us in these moments? Or we may read something and think, I have no idea what that means at all. And making sense of the Bible with many of its strange sayings and stories, and there's some strange things in the Bible, can be like trying to figure out rocket science or even brain surgery. In other words, it needs some explanation. And maybe you have some very specific feelings about the Bible. Or maybe, in some instances, you hear people talk about how life-changing Scripture can be. How life-changing Scripture can be. But when you read it, it doesn't really change anything. Maybe you still feel anxious when you look into God's Word. Maybe you still have arguments. Maybe it's an argument with a friend or your spouse. And you still don't feel great about yourself. So you're left wondering and asking yourselves these questions about exactly how is the Bible life changing? Or maybe the Bible has been explained to you by different people, but these different people all say different things. And what one person says contradicts what another person says. Yet they both talk with authority like they know the right way to understand the Bible. It's difficult, isn't it, to sometimes understand this book, God's Holy Word. You see, some people look at the Bible as a history book. Some maybe use it as a weapon to try to get their point across. Some look at it as a, as a part of their morning routine. As soon as they wake up in the morning, they open His Word to be filled with what He's trying to tell us. And some people view it maybe as an instruction manual. You see how many different ways that this Bible is used? No wonder people are confused. No wonder that we need to try to explain what Scripture is telling us. All of which can leave us wondering, what exactly is the purpose of the Bible? Now, it may seem like a simple answer this morning. And what's the point of His Word? And what good does this ancient book mean for us here and now in today's society? But this here is a safe place this morning for those who are here, our worship team and our sound team. And for those of you who are watching, this is a safe place to ask questions. It's a safe place to ask those questions and when frustrations come up. And you don't have to leave those unanswered because questions are okay. And in full disclosure this morning, we won't answer every question you have about the Bible. And if you put questions in our comment section, we might not answer all of them this morning. We may not even answer one of them. But it can engage us in conversation. And we won't even answer all of those questions throughout this sermon series because God is so much bigger than we can comprehend, isn't he? He is so much bigger than what we can fit into these next four weeks. And just like we don't always understand everything that happens in our life, we may never fully understand everything contained in the divinely inspired scripture instead our goal 
for this sermon is to find some new ways of thinking about Scripture. And we're going to extend that into the next number of weeks. So to start off this morning, the Bible is divided into two sections, and I'm sure many of us know that. From the Old Testament, which is the section that was written before Jesus was born, in the New Testament, which is about Jesus, about his life and the followers who began his church. And ultimately, the Bible is a collection of documents, historical books, eyewitness accounts, letters, songs, and journals, all written under the inspiration of God's Spirit. So why did God give us his holy word anyway? Why did he give us his word? He is God. He could have just remained a mystery to us forever. And we would have just wondered about who he is and what he's like. But he didn't want us to wonder. He didn't want us to be confused. Because he wants us to know him. He wants us to know him. And that's why he gave us the Bible. That's why he gave us his holy word. In all of its different components, it tells us the story of individuals throughout history and about God's interactions with them. And as we read it, as you read scripture in your own time, we learn about the words he said, the actions that he took, and what he promised to do in our lives. He promised to be there for us. So God's word, the Bible, the word of God, it tells us who God is and what he's like. And he gave it to us so we can know him. Just like it says on your screen, the point of the Bible is to know God better. And it's not just simply a collection of inspired books and letters and songs. Yes, there are stories, there are psalms, there are documents, but ultimately... Ultimately, the Bible serves as one big insight into the God who inspired it, the person who inspired it. I like what Stu here mentioned in our comment section. So that the Bible was an acronym for basic instruction before leaving earth. Bible, basic instruction before leaving earth. I love it. Thank you, Stu, for that this morning. But this is why studying the Bible is like a marathon. It's not a sprint. It's going to take years and years and years to understand it fully. And will we ever understand Scripture in its entirety? Maybe not. Biblical scholars, they study the Scriptures their entire life, yet they still have questions. They're still maybe a little bit confused about things, but one thing that they always come back to is that the Bible is that instruction to know who He is, and that's Jesus. So not only does the Scripture tell us who God is, but He wants us to know Him even more deeply on a personal level. So He came Himself, and a Jewish writer explained it this way. Long ago, God spoke many times and in many ways to our ancestors through the prophets. And now in these final days, he has given to us through his son and Jesus. And now in these final days, he has spoken to us through his son. Long ago, the son radiates God's own glory and expresses the very character of God. Matt just commented, it is Christ himself, not the Bible, who is the true word of God. The Bible, read in the right spirit and with the guidance of good teachers, will bring us to him. C.S. Lewis. Some great things this morning being dialogued. So while the words in the Bible are from God, Jesus is the ultimate and clearest message from God. Jesus is God himself. His story is the central story of scripture, of our very being even. 
He is what makes everything else make sense in our life. In other words, the biggest job of the Bible is to point us to Jesus, isn't it? And why does that matter so much? Why does it matter so much? Because Jesus is the most perfect picture of God. He is God. Before Jesus arrived on earth, God revealed himself to the prophets who would then share with people what God had said. But with this arrival, we, we now had a new way to know what God is like. Today, the Bible is the place that helps us to understand the story. It helps us understand the story. And when we know Jesus better, we know God better. So when we read the Bible, we need to keep that goal in mind that we get to know God when we get to know Jesus. We get to know God when we get to know Jesus. We, we will all have valid, important questions about things we read in the Bible. And we're going to have questions. There's no doubt about it. But the biggest answer to the question of what's the point of all of this? What's the point of his holy word? And yes, it's the Sunday school answer. It's Jesus. The point is to know Jesus better. Maybe think of it this way in this illustration. Have you ever been to a 3D movie? Obviously, maybe not in the past year or so. But have you ever been to a 3D movie? It's a, it's a neat experience if, if you wear the glasses, of course. I mean, without the glasses, you kind of see what's going on. But the, mov the movie is way better if you put on those very uncomfortable glasses and you look at it through those lenses. They enable you to see everything clearly. And the Bible is kind of like that as well. All of the early books, the poetry, the law books, the prophecy books, they all give you a glimpse of what God is like. But Jesus is like putting on those 3D glasses. Suddenly, all of the other stuff makes a little bit more sense. And you and I can see it maybe a little bit more clearly. Now, I know that may sound like a a simple illustration. But isn't it a little bit true this morning? So if you're starting to read the Bible for the first time. Or for the first time in a long time. We need to start with Jesus. Start with what he said. And what his friends said about him. We should put our attention there. Because the point of the Bible is to know God better. And Jesus is the best place to start. But let's make it even a little bit more practical this morning. Let's actually practice it for a moment or two. So I want you to maybe grab a pen and a piece of paper if you're at home. Or you can take up your smartphone and, and put it in the notes app. But I want you to, to grab a pen and a piece of paper. And after we read it, I'm, I'm going to give you three questions to think through that will help you work out these verses in Mark 12, 30, 31. In fact, you can ask these three questions about any verse you read in the Bible. You can put this into practice. And in one of the four Gospels, which are the four books that tell about Jesus' life in the New Testament, we read that a religious leader asked Jesus a big question. Out of all of God's commands that he's given to us, which one is the greatest? And here's what Jesus responded to. And, and Tom and Dalton maybe want to just bring up these scripture verses again one more time. It says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And the second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. 
So knowing this about Jesus, think about these questions, and here's where you can write them down, and I'll mention it a couple times. The first one is, what does this teach me about God? What does this verse, these verses, teach me about God? And since Jesus prioritized loving God and loving your neighbor above all other things, what do you think he cares most about? Loving your neighbor, putting others above self. He cares about. He cares about love. He cares about loving God and loving people. Love God, love others. Considering that, is there anything that needs to change in the way that you see God? So that first question, and Tanisha's mentioned it in her comments, what does this teach me about God? The second question, question, what does this teach me about myself? What does this text this morning teach me about myself? The first question, it forces you to learn about God, first and foremost. This question forces us and forces you to learn about yourself. For example, in the middle of all this talking about love, is the assumption that you are loving yourself. Another way of saying that is self-care. And God assumes that you're caring for yourself. So the question is this morning, are you? Are you looking after yourself? Or the better question is, is are you learning more about God through His Word? Are you spending time in Scripture? in your daily walk with Christ. So the first one again, what does this teach me about God? Then, what does this teach me about myself? And last this morning, what does this teach me about how I need to live or treat others? I'll read it again. What does this teach me about how I need to live or treat others. Now, we might read a verse and be inspired by it, absolutely. But if we don't know how to bring that verse into our day-to-day lives or bring it into context about what it's saying, it won't do us much good. We just can't take Scripture and, and just pull out a verse and say, okay, this is it. We need to look at the context of where it's coming from. So we ask ourselves this. If I put this into practice, the, this, these verses this morning, how would it affect the way that I treat my family, my friends, my coworkers, even your enemies? What do I need to do differently in the light of the fact that Jesus says loving your neighbor is part of the greatest commandment. It's loving your neighbor as yourself. Protecting one another in this world we live in. So as the worship team comes back this morning, I, I ask you to continue to reflect on those questions this morning. What does this teach me about God? What does this teach me about myself? And what does this teach me about how I need to live or treat others? And these questions can help us understand the Bible better. And as we do, we'll get to know God better. And that's the whole point of Scripture. The point of the Bible is to know God better. And the truth is, yeah, the Bible can seem confusing. A little bit. It can seem confusing, but the ultimate point is to know Christ better. It's to know Christ better. In reading Scripture, reading about Jesus is the perfect way to do that. 
So as you're thinking this morning and meditating on His Word and those couple of verses that we looked at this morning as we start off our our sermon series and explained, um, we're going to sing a song, Who You Say I Am. Who the sun sets free, oh, is free indeed. I'm a child of God. Is what it ultimately comes down to, that we are children of God. And we need to know our Father in heaven. We need to know who Christ is. As the song says, who am I to the highest king? Welcome me into this place, into his loving arms. We need to know Christ more. We need to know what scripture says about him. And we need to put that into practice. So as we sing this song this morning, I I want you to reflect on those questions. Maybe you want to continue to jot down some of your thoughts this morning. I see there's some great conversation happening online. and, And we want to continue to welcome that. Engage in conversation. I think this is maybe the only time that you're allowed you're allowed to talk in church. We want you to discuss and ask those questions. And maybe you want to call up a friend after and say, you know, what's your thoughts on this? Maybe you want to reach out to Lieutenant Tanisha or I and say, I had this question and we want to know what this means. But we need to focus on who God is to us. that we're children of God. So as we sing, I encourage you to continue to meditate on His Word, to answer these questions for yourself. But make it personal this morning, friends. Make it personal. Ask Jesus, Jesus, are you revealing enough to me? Reach out. Look into His Word. Ask questions. But the greatest thing you need to know is that God loves you. He wants to know you. He wants you to call him his king, his father, because we are children of his. And as we do, as we do this morning, we can sing that we are children of God. We're not forsaken. You are who you say you are that we belong to him sing with me sing with us as we continue reflecting this morning
chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. Oh, I am chosen, not forsaken. Father, we are thankful that we do have a place in your house. We do have a place in your heart that we can call you Father and that you can call us your sons and your daughters. Lord, there may be times in our lives where we feel lost or we, we're confused about what um, your word says to us, but Lord, we just ask that you continue to reveal what you want us to hear in these days as we continue in our journey um, of knowing who you are in our Christian walk. But Father, in these moments, we thank you for your word, what it says to us, and how you've commanded to love our neighbors as ourself. But Lord, we, we need to love ourselves first. We need to look after ourselves. And Lord, as we um, just sang that song, we reflect on knowing that we belong to you. So Lord, our prayer today is that those who may be watching, those who are worshiping with us that maybe don't know you, that you will reveal yourself to them, that they accept who you are for their lives. Lord, for those who have been on this journey for quite some time, we, we just say, Lord, continue to reveal yourself to us. Point us in the right direction. Guide our paths. Lord, it all comes back to knowing you. And to know Scripture is to know you better. So, Lord, we thank you for your word this morning. We thank you for this time of worship, what it means to us. So, Father, bless our time together. For those who are still contemplating and reflecting, continue to use them, God. Continue to reveal what it is you want them to hear and to see. So, Father, in these moments, thank you for who you are and blessing us today. Father, we pray this all in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. Well, church, thanks for joining us this morning uh, for worship. Thank you again to the worship team um, for help leading us in worship. I just have a few announcements this morning. Um, June 5th is the next Women's Day, so stay tuned to Facebook and your emails. Lieutenant Tanisha is hoping um, that she can help um, lead this day in her recovery and uh, we're just looking at um, some final details for that day. Uh, they're meeting this week to discuss that, so stay tuned. I know that there's some great things in store for that day. 
May 29th, we have our next men's breakfast for God's grunts. And yeah, Pat's going, ho, oh, oh, ho, oh. ho, God's grunts. Um, men's breakfast, May 29th at 9.30. And have an eye um, in your emails for that. It'll start at 9.30. And uh, Richard will be leading us in the next section of our Bible study together. And we'll be unpacking some of God's word there. Um, we also want to remind you to send us your pictures of your X marks the spot family night um, that some of you maybe did over this weekend. Um, we want to show um, the division, show those who uh, follow us on our Facebook page about what it means to follow Jesus and how we're looking for that treasure in Jesus. So send us your pictures on that and uh, we'll share those with our greater community to show what's happening here at Connection Point. And this morning, we also have some prayer requests. Um, first off, though, we want to wish Shay Paul a happy birthday. She's six years old today. Um, so we want to say happy birthday to you, Shay. Um, but we also want to pray for Shay. Um, over the last no uh, number of weeks, she's been having some seizures um, that um, has caused some concern for the family, like it would. Um, so we just want to uplift Shay this morning in prayer. Um, so we just um, ask you to do that um, for the family, for us as a body of believers, as your church, to pray for our children especially. And uh, we just want to pray for Shay in these moments. Um, we continue to pray for Lieutenant Tanisha as she's home. Uh, recovering from knee surgery. Uh, we just pray that um, she gets the rest she needs. Pray for um, full healing and for her to just be still in these days. So we continue to ask for prayer for that. Uh, we want to pray for our Red Cap participants, uh, those who are partaking in anger management for kids, for um, healthy emotional boundaries. Um, we have four of them, or five of them, who are in that program, who meet weekly. So we just ask um, to pray for those as well. And lastly, this morning is a bit of a praise report. Um, following this service, um, the division, um, the BC division, the province of BC, and the youth department will be enrolling some new junior soldiers. And for Connection Point, we have two new junior soldiers in Sohana and Lalani. So we want you to pray for those two individuals as well. And there's small claps going on in the background. Um, so we want to congratulate them as they partake in that service following this one. Um, we'll be a part of it as well, Tanisha and I. Uh, Rachel as well will be uh, recommitting her junior soldier pledge. Um, to say that she is a follower of Jesus, and uh, we just want to say thank you um, for your prayers for our children especially, but we want to congratulate um, all the children who are being enrolled in that service today. And that's it for announcements. Again, we thank you for your participation this morning in our worship and for some great dialogue this morning um, while we looked into God's Word. Um, so, before we sing our last song, I leave you with this um, benediction of praying for God's equipping presence in our lives. It's found in Hebrews chapter 13, verses 20 to 21. Now may the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything good that you may do his will, working in us, that which is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Church, may God bless you. May you have a great week. And we just pass it back to our worship team to lead us in our final song this morning. May God bless you. Amen. All right. Let's uh, sing, in a, sing one song as we uh, close our time together. It's called, How Can I Keep From Singing? Good 